Hello, in today's lesson, we will learn about the basic concept of the cameras, the internal structures of the cameras and how the objects can be projected inside of the cameras on the screen. So uh, basically, uh, in today's lectures, uh, the first part I will cover in terms of the pinhole camera construction in which uh, this is the basic foundation of every cameras this is the first step of the cameras on how uh, from creating or blocking the uh, most of the rays we can project a very focused image so the second thing is uh, lens based cameras so for the lens based camera is uh, by how we use lens how the lens works in order to generate more focus image uh, on the screen and then secondly the arrangement of lens uh, inside of the cameras that can generate a very focus uh, that can be used to zoom up or zoom in the objects to generate more focus image and then the third thing is uh, in terms of the simple types of cameras uh, for the single lens, reflex cameras, uh, point and shoot cameras and etc. So let's say we are given some tasks in order to generate our own or to construct our own cameras. So we have a series of the screen here or the film or white screen. So uh, for this particular case, can we actually map the object here to generate image uh, on top of the film or the white screen? So the answer will be no. So the reason why is that uh, most of the objects, every point of the objects will generate rays. So usually it will be not a single rays, but it will be multiple rays. So uh, every point uh, on the object will generate multiple rays. So let's say we have another location here so for the second location also the rays will be generated so uh since uh most of the point we generate many rays so if we try to ensure that uh the object will be projected onto the image we can't get it because of too many rays was actually projected on that particular screen so that will be quite impossible for us to generate the image so how we can do that things so one of the answer is by adding the barrier so what is the function of the barriers so let's say uh, we have the same arrangement only in this particular condition we have the barrier in which the barrier will actually block most of the rays so the same situation so uh, point every point on the objects will generate many rays so barrier will be utilized uh, to ensure that only single ray will be projected on the screen or the film so the same thing will be happening in, of every point uh, on the object. So for this particular condition, since the barrier is responsible, is uh, is function to block most of the rays. So for this particular case, we can actually generate image on top of the screen of film. So this is uh, the way of the pinhole camera works in which this is the meaning of the pinhole means that uh, we just put some sort of the small hole here we call that thing as the pinhole a very small pin uh, sorry very, very small dimension of hole so that uh, it can be used to block most of the rays so we can project a uh, quite uh, clear image on top of the screen so uh, to improve our understanding about this particular concept, let's just uh, see this video. So along the way, I will try to explain what is actually happening in every second of the video. So this is uh, the simple uh, foundation on how we generate the pinhole cameras. So first thing, just create some hole, pinhole. And then we have some self-luminous object the lamp so once we create the uh, pinhole so the object will be projected on the screen so we call that thing as the image of object so as we move near to the object it will become bigger and then uh, we move far from the object it will become smaller so the second part if we increase the dimension of the pinhole so what will be happening? 
so as can be seen from the video so we have quite a blur image but still quite reasonable so what will be happening if we try to increase uh, more in terms of the dimension of the pinhole so you can see from here the image become much more blur so in some situation if we try to move near to the object so we some sort of we have a multiple image generated on the screen so in this particular case what will be happening if we try to uh, add the number of the pinhole so you can see from here so we add many number of pinhole so it will be uh, the same amount of image that was projected on the screen even though we have just single object since we have multiple pinhole so for this particular condition multiple image will be generated on the screen Okay, uh, this is uh, the situation what will happening when we put the lens inside of the camera. So you can see the result, even though we have a multiple pinhole, once we put the lens, we just have only single image projected on the screen. Okay, the same thing will be happening if we try to increase the dimension of the pinhole. So once we put the lens, we will get nice image, single image on the screen. So the same thing when we try to obtain the image from the environment. So the image from the environment will be projected on the screen. So that is the basic concept of the pinhole cameras in which from a very single uh, aperture, single, very single pinhole, uh, it will be utilized to block most of the rays and then generate a single object and then later on uh, increase the dimension of the pit hole and then as a result of the uh, increase the dimension the image become blur and then add multiple pit hole uh, as a result we have a multiple image generated on the screen and then later on uh, add some lens in front of the cameras then we can obtain the single image even though we have multiple uh, pinhole and then at the same time try to increase the aperture size the pinhole size see so we can uh, generate much more better result single object uh, projected on the screen and then later on uh, once we put the lens we can actually obtain a uh, image uh, from the environment that can be projected on the screen so there is the the the, the flow of the video so we try to recap that things in this uh, simple concept so uh, the first thing first is that uh, this will be our so let me first uh, okay so uh, let's say this will be our uh, screen this is our screen so this is our object in the environment and then uh, this is the front part of the camera so in which this will be the pinhole so if we wish to capture the object here so we can create a just small pinhole inside of the sorry in front of the camera so this is what we call as the uh, center of projection in this case so the image will be uh, generated in the screen which is uh, in this case we call as the image plane 
So the effective focal length uh, F is actually the distance from center of the camera to the screen. So this is what we call as the uh, effective focal length. Okay, now let's move on to the next part. Uh, in which this is a more on the theoretical aspect uh, of explanation about uh, what you have seen in the video just now. So uh, this will be some uh, repetition about the previous concept. So uh, in this case, we have the uh, self-luminous object, which is the lamp. So the lamp will generate every point uh, on the lamp will generate many rays. So since we have the pinhole here, so it will block most of the rays. And then uh, the same thing with the other points uh, on the object. So eventually we will have uh, some nice object that will be uh, plotted on the screen. We call this thing as the image. So uh, in our subsequent chapter, so we call the real object in the environment as the object. And then whatever plotted on the screen, we will name it as an image so basically uh, image that was projected uh, on the screen uh, the coordination will be upside down in which in the reverse uh, in the reverse from the its original notation so uh, the next part so for this uh, particular uh, three type of the condition so we have three type of the cameras in this case with different focal length so this is a small focal length medium focal length and then a longer focal length so for this particular case the question is that which camera that will produce the smallest image of the light bulb so let's say we have some sort of the hint in terms of the projection so for this particular case a b and c it can be clearly seen that uh, for this case uh, object a will be the smallest if we try to plot uh, object here inside of the camera so uh, in this case the answer will be A so because of what one of the reason because of this is the uh, shortest focal length of the cameras so this is the longest focal length of the cameras so in an easy way so if you try to look at the SLR camera if you want to take picture from very far away so you can see the most of the lens will be a bit longer so if you see something like uh, in F1 race, so most of the photographer, the lens will be much more longer. So the aim is that uh, they want to capture object from far away. So that's the reason they need uh, the lens that is quite long that will be translated into the longer uh, focal length of the camera. So uh, in the next example, so uh, in this case, we have three types of the cameras, which is in this case, the focal length of the camera will be the same for the three types of the cameras. So only we capture the image of the object from three different locations. So for this particular case, which camera that will produce the smallest image of the light bulb A, B and C. So this is uh, pretty easy to understand because of let's say if you're holding a camera and then if you want to capture an object uh, if you want to get a bigger uh, dimension of the object, you need to move near to the object. So if you move uh, away from the object, so for that particular condition, you will have quite small image generated on the screen. So for this particular case, so the smallest image like what will be number in the model C. C because of what? Because of uh, the focal length will be the same. So you move away from the object. So that's one of the reason that your object will become much more smaller. So uh, the next part. So one thing that you need to remember. Uh, so our previous example showed that uh, our object is self-luminous, which is the lamp. But uh, in a real condition, it will be not necessary that the object will be self-luminous. The the source of the light can be from any uh, any angle, any location. So as long as we have the source of light when we take the picture. So for this particular case, uh, if let's say the source of light in from uh, somewhere else, if you try to capture the picture of the apple for this particular case. So uh, the rays 
based on the source of light will be the same thing will be happening it will be projected the to the cameras to the pinhole uh, so this will be the same thing so in general uh, as long as you have a source of light uh, in, reg in regardless of variable location so you can actually capture the objects uh, in that particular environment uh, as long as you have the source of light okay uh, so the next part so uh, let's say if we try to increase the dimension of the pit hole so that we can get more light to pass through uh, so means that in that situation we want to capture uh, more uh, image or more surrounding from the environment so in this particular case if we try to increase the the dimension of the pinhole so in this particular case what we will be obtain is that we will obtain quite blur image so the reason why because of once we increase the dimension of the pinhole so this the the meaning is that we let more rays uh, from the same point of the object passing through uh, to the cameras and then that's the reason we have very low image so this is was uh, this was illustrated in this particular image so uh, for this particular condition how we can able to solve that particular problem so as can as you have seen from the video so we can use lens uh, in order to solve that particular issue so uh, how the lens works is that by adding the lens so we have uh, some effect that we call as the refraction uh, refraction means that uh, the aim of lens it will uh, focus of every incoming rays regardless regardless of how many rays and then the lens will be responsible in order to focus all the incoming rays into the single point based on the focal point of the lens so for this particular case uh, by adding the lens it will bend the rays uh, to focus on the single point and then as a result for this particular case we will obtain a very focused image uh, on the screen So this is uh, some sort of the condition, image, uh, size and zoom. So for this particular case, we have uh, many conditions. So in this case, uh, we have cameras with the same lens, uh, with the same focal lens. And then from the different, uh, we take the thing from a different type of the distance. So what is the effect? Uh, so in general, if we take the object quite far, from the object so the image generated will be smaller so if we move near to the objects then the image will be much more bigger so uh, this is uh, another concept in which we have two type of cameras with different type of the focal length so if we wish to ensure that we get much bigger objects uh, we try to zoom out the object so what we can do is that we need to increase the focal length of the focal length of the camera so that uh, the generated image that was projected on the screen will be much more bigger so this is the, the basic concept of the relation between the focal length uh, the distance you capture the image uh, in regards of uh, what will be projected on the screen okay now uh, let's move on to the another important aspects of the camera with lens so for this particular case uh, from the simple pinhole concept uh, in which if we wish to get a much more bigger object if we try to zoom the object what we can do is that we increase the focal length means that uh, the focal length means that the distance between the cameras in front of the cameras and the screen so we can get a much bigger object but uh, the problem is that when we have a situation that we use the lens if we try to use the same concept what will be obtained is that uh, if we try to increase the distance uh, from the cameras to the back screen so for this particular case we will obtain a uh, object that is not really focused so the reason why is that 
because of the aim of lens is to focus just on one spot so it means that uh, every incoming rays here will be focusing on the single spot of the image so let's say uh, in this particular condition if you can see from here so the lens will be responsible in order to focus on the some spot here so if we change uh, if we move our screen to the other location so for that particular condition our image will not become uh, sharp so <coughs> how we can do to solve this particular problem so if we wish to get uh, a bigger image by using camera with lens so what we can do is that we have two ways to do that thing so the first we need to increase the distance uh, between uh, screen and camera so let's say I just put uh, SC we need to increase the distance between the screen and the camera so that's one thing so second we need to alter the lens focal point so if we wish to get the very uh if sorry if we wish to get the zoom up of the image much more bigger image projected on the screen with the camera with lens uh we need to do two steps the first one to increase the distance between camera and the screen and then second one we need to amend or alter in terms of the uh the lens focal point so for this particular case we can obtain a very focused image on the screen so uh this is some sort of the uh effect of the focusing so it means that uh let's say uh in one time the camera can focus on the uh, single location of the image so for this particular case if we wish to capture uh the image uh persons uh and then we have another object appear in front of that thing so if we focus on this thing so uh this thing will be focused and then uh in contrast the other image here will be not focused so uh it will be the same for other part so this is what we call as uh, image in focus if we try to focus on one single point so the image will become clear when the background will become much more blur so if we try to focus on the background the background will become much more clear but the object in front of the cameras will become blur So uh, one of the concept with the camera with lens is the thin lens concept. So uh, for the thin lens equation, so basically the general equation will be something like this, in which 1 over DO plus 1 over DI will be equal to 1 over F. So DO is the distance between object to the lens, and then DI is the distance between the lens and the screen in order to generate the image and then f is actually the uh, focal length or focus point of the lens so uh, how we can obtain this particular equation in general so i will show you some sort of the example so i uh, have provided the detailed calculation uh, of the pdf to you so you can uh, try to look in into the details on how we obtain to how we able to obtain the the final equation. But uh, for this particular case, uh, in general, so this is the basic concept on how we able to construct that particular equation. So in general, we have the object here, which is object in the real environment. So the object will be projected on the screen that we call as the image here. So for this particular case, the TO. TO is the distance from object to lens. Okay, I use different color. So DI is the distance from the lens here to the screen to generate the image. So HO is the height of the object and then hi is the height 
of the image that was projected on the screen. So this is the basic notation. And F is the focal length. Focal length is the uh, focus point of the lens here. So you can see from here, uh, this is the rays generated from the objects. And then uh, the lens will bend the rays to one single point here. And then to generate some sort of the image uh, on the screen. So this is what we call the straight line here. We call this thing as the principal axis. So basically, uh, as the general notation, if the value of the i is positive, so we know that uh, the object generated will be real, which is in the right side of the lens. Whereas if the i is negative, so the image is actually virtual. So if the image was generated in here, some sort of the what you see in front of the uh, mirror, so you see the image uh, will be in the same side of you. So in this particular case, uh, the image generated uh, will be known as the virtual image. So in a simple way, the same thing will be happening for the H. So if the value of H will be positive, so means that the image will be starting from the principal axis going upward. Whereas uh, if the height is negative, means that uh, the image uh, will be downward with respect to the principal axis. So in this particular condition, usually if your image will be real, so in general, the image uh, height will be negative. Whereas uh, if your image is virtual, as you can see from in front of the mirror, so it means that your height of the object will be uh, upward, which is will be positive. So in this particular case, you will generate a virtual image. Okay, now uh, let's move on to the details on how we can uh, determine uh, the equation that are able to relate between the lens and then the distance. So let's uh, focus in this part. So uh, if you can see from here in the left side of the lens, so uh, in the left side of the lens here, you can actually generate series of triangle. So if I take up uh, these two triangles here and then I just put it here. So in general, we just uh, put the label here. So HO is HO here will be become HO here. So in this case, uh, this part is actually directly related to the HI. So we just put the tagging of the HI here. So the distance uh, from this point here to this point will be equal to F. So the same thing. And then later on, uh, the next part here, the length of this part, since the distance from the objects to the lens is equal to DO. So if we wish to get the distance only for this particular part, the length of this part, so the length of this part will be equal to TO minus F. So uh, in the left side of the part, so we can say that uh, this is the triangle generated. So we can actually map this thing, HI in here. Okay. So if we map the HI in that particular things, we can use the simple triangulation concept in which uh, the triangulation concept means that you take this side over this side will be equal to this side, the length of this side over this side. So we can uh, simply plug into uh, that uh, particular equation means that for this case, HO over HI means that uh, HO this part of HI equal to we need to take uh, the length of this part in the x-axis, which is do minus f over f. So we have our first equation. So this is in terms of the uh, left side of the lens. So let's move on to the next part, which is the right side of the lens. So for the right side of the lens, so we have another triangle. Let me just uh, put different colors here. So we have another arrangement of the triangle here so we just take up 
that triangle and then draw it back here so uh, for this case the same thing so for this part since this is uh, in line with the height here so we just put ho here so this thing will be hi okay straight away and then later on the distance from the lens uh, to the focal point uh, is actually f in here and then later on since the distance from the lens to the screen is equal to ti so if we wish to get only the length of this part means that it will be ti minus f okay once we have that thing so the next part is simple straightforward the same thing with the previous one means that we can use the triangulation concept the same concept we have ho over hi will be equal to in this case f over di minus f so that we have our second equation so once we have both equations so if you look at the liquid the equation in the left side and then the right side of the lens so you can see that uh, the primer of both equation will be the same so since it will be the same we can say that uh, equation number one will be equal is equal to equation number two so we can uh, simply rearrange that thing into this particular notation means that do minus f here is equal to f over di minus f so we have this type of notation here so uh, the following step will be straightforward so it means that we cross multiply this part means that do minus f times di minus f equal to f squared so we have this part and then do some sort of the arrangement we expand the left side of the equation so we expand that thing by do di minus do f minus di f plus f squared equal to f squared and then f squared will be eliminated so that we left the this particular equation so once we are here so the next part we can do some sort of the arrangement means that uh, we just uh, omit the f part and then let it in terms of the do plus di so this equation will be equal to do di so we can rearrange that thing easily so we have this type of the notation means that do plus di equal do plus di over do di equal to 1 over f again we do some sort of the arrangement of that thing the same thing we expand the left side of the equation and then uh, we move the 1 over f in front of the equation so this thing can be cancel out this thing will be cancel out so we have the final equation of lens which is 1 over f equal to 1 over the i plus 1 over the o so this is uh, some sort of the uh, flow of how we can uh, derive the equation of lens uh, from the very uh, simple structure of arrangement up until we obtain the final equation uh, basically the concept will be based on the triangulation so uh, you need to memorize this part of the equation because of we will uh, utilize that thing in our calculation later on and then the second part of the equation that you need to know is in terms of the lens magnification so lens magnifications means that uh, how the image was magnified with respect to the object. So in a simple way, uh, how bigger will be the uh, image generated based on the object. It can be either uh, become bigger or it can be either become smaller. So basically, uh, the lens magnification, we can use, usually we will use the notation of M in the equation. So in this case, M will be equal to size of image over size of object. So uh, image means that uh, the one that was generated in the right side of the lens means that what is projected, what was projected on the screen. Whereas uh, object is the one that is exists in the real world environment. So uh, basically, 
uh, for this particular case okay uh, so there is some sort of the mistake here but I think uh, in the so we don't have any negative sign here for the HI I have uh, correct that things in your uh, PDF file so basically uh, size of image over size of object it will actually positive M will be equal to HI over HO which is the height of image over height of objects and it is equal to the negative DI over DO means that uh, the distance uh, of the image over distance of the object so in general uh, the magnification will become negative for the uh, arrangement of this lens so for this particular case if you can see from here uh, for this case uh, because of the HI will be uh, upside down in terms of the uh, the coordination so for this particular case uh, we will have the negative sign here because of HI will be equal to negative HI so the magnification of the lens will become uh, negative HI over HO which is will be equal to uh, negative DI over DO so uh, up until now we just need to uh, remember we have the equation of lens here uh, which is 1 over F equal to 1 over DI plus 1 over DO which is DI is the distance from lens to the image DO distance from the object to the lens and then F is the focal length of the lens and then second thing in terms of the magnification magnification will be equal to the size of image over size of object it can be translated into HI over DO or negative DI over DO so we will uh, utilize this equation uh, later on in our next lecture in order to do some sort of the calculation. So this is uh, just simple uh, introduction about the thin lens. Uh, so we try to move on. We move on to the next part, uh, which is uh, this is the internal structure of the camera. So usually uh, the camera will uh, comprises of uh, many type of lens and then type cram. So this is the, the part that is responsible in order to obtain very focused image uh, on the screen. And then uh, in, for the inside of the camera, the film or screen, usually we call that thing as the digital screen which is we call that thing as the CCD which is the charge couple uh, diode. Uh, in which it consists of the a lot of the arrays uh, when every it, the arrays will capture uh, every every time you open the shutter so light will be passing through and then it will be illuminate the CCD and then for that type of process it will generate uh, the image on the screen so uh, this is just a simple example of the camera. This is the Polaroid uh, cameras. Uh, it can be used straight away in order to uh, print out the image uh, based on the object of interest. So you can see from here, this is the object. And then the image generated inside of the camera will be upside down in terms of the, its arrangement. Uh, so this is uh, the previous it's quite uh, ancient uh, cameras and then finally this is uh, one of the common cameras nowadays which is the SLR camera so uh, in the SLR camera you can see from here so this is the internal structure of the camera in which you have some mirror here so mirror here will be responsible in order to ensure that all the view image that we have view from the environment can be seen from here so uh, when you push the uh, button here so the the mirror will be lift up and then the light will be passing through to eliminate the ccd so that particular case you will obtain the image uh, inside of the camera so this is uh, another type of the camera which is the point and shoot uh, digital camera So basically, uh, there is some sort of the basic introduction uh, about the cameras. So in general, you have learned a basic theory about the pinhole cameras, uh, the construction of the pinhole cameras, what is the effect 
uh, once you increase the number uh, sorry once you increase the diameter of the pinhole and then uh, the second part is the effect of adding some lens uh, lens will be responsible in order to bending the ray so that you have very focused image and then another part is that uh, what will happen if you wish to get the bigger image uh, by using the camera with lens so what you need to do is that first thing first is that you need to increase the the range or the length uh, from the the from the lens to the screen and then second thing is that you need to change in terms of the uh, focal lens uh, lens focal point so that you can obtain very bigger and then very focused image so the another part is the some simple introduction about the the lens which is uh, how we able to derive the equation of lens so basically the equation of lens will be 1 over f equal to 1 over du plus 1 over di and then the second important equation is in terms of the magnification which is the magnification will be the size of image over size of object it can be translated into the hi over ho in which hi is the height of the image and then ho will be the height of the object so hi will be directed in terms of whether your image will be uh, projected from the uh, principal axis uh, point out uh from up from uh, projected from the principal axis uh, upward or downward downward will be negative upward will be positive and then second thing uh, the magnification will be equal to a negative di over do in which the di is the distance from the lens to the screen whereas do is the distance from the object to the screen so i think that's all for your uh for this lecture so uh, i will show you the example later on in details in our next lecture thank you very much